Welcome to another edition of our Online Entrepreneurship Initiative. Once again, I'm Leroy Kumalo, and I'm one of the facilitators of the training. Welcome to our Sales, Marketing, and E-Commerce um, module. Before we get started, please let us remind ourselves of the ground rules. We'll be given an opportunity to speak at the end of the session where we're going to have our discussions as well as our question and answer sessions. Please, when given an opportunity to, uh, to, to, to speak, please wait for others to finish speaking before you start speaking. When it's time you start uh, speaking, please state your name so that others can begin to recognize your voice. Let's try by all means to be on time for our sessions, a few minutes early so that you are able to set up on time. Let us forget to bring up the challenges and discuss any successes that we have at our place of businesses. Please submit your expectations on, the, on our online poll regarding the particular and this particular module. In this uh, sales and marketing, this is what we're going to discuss. Firstly, the changing nature of marketing com uh, competition the market research, segmentation and targeting, positioning and value propositions, branding and pricing, distribution, integrated marketing and communication, digital marketing and social media, and e-commerce. All of this will be covered in line with our um, industry sector, which is the agricultural sector. Let us get started. The changing nature of marketing. What do you want to achieve in this um, section of the module? We want to appreciate that the market is dynamic and there is constant and ever-changing um, nature of marketing over time. We want to understand the link between connection, competition and market changes. Let us get started. Please test your current knowledge with regards to the importance of marketing. How is the level of understanding with regards to changing nature of marketing, understanding your market, analyzing your market relative, uh, analyzing your business relative to the market. Let's get started. What is marketing? The word marketing refers to activities that a business undertakes to promote the buying or selling of a product or service. So this is different activities that you can embark on as a business owner in order to sell or promote whatever produce you sell and whatever service you sell. This includes advertising, selling, and delivering products to consumers and other businesses. Well, some marketing is done by affiliates on behalf of a company. You realize that some businesses outsource marketing agents to do the marketing of their businesses. But what is the importance of marketing. We seek to measure companies' products and services to our consumers or customers. With marketing, we want to understand our customers. We want to then, after understanding them, we match our products or services uh, with our customers. This we are doing so in order to ensure that our businesses are profitable at the end of the day. Now, let us into, look into the different uh, mixes of marketing, the four pieces of marketing, the product, the price, the place, and promotion. These four pieces collectively make up the essential mix a company needs to market a product or services. Now, let us dwell a bit on them and so that we get a bit of understanding of these four pieces of marketing. I will briefly share with you a video that talks to the four pieces of marketing. Please uh, let us watch the video so that we understand briefly um, the four pieces of marketing and how they can um, have an impact of our businesses or, um, or yes, have an impact on our businesses.
What is marketing? A common definition is putting the right product in the right place at the right price at the right time. Sounds simple, no? Well, not always. There are so many factors you need to consider when marketing a product or service. And if you get just one element wrong, it can be a disaster for your whole campaign. This is where the four P's of marketing are useful. They stand for product, place, price, and promotion. To show you how effective they can be, let's imagine we want to market a new lamp. The lamp is special because it mimics the warmth and light of the sun. We'd start by asking key questions about the first P, the product itself. One important thing to ask is, what do our customers want? The answer could be that they crave warm, natural light, especially on dark winter days. We could also ask how it differs from competing products. Our lamp is of higher quality, and its light is more like the sun than the others on the market. So let's look at the next P, which is place. Where would buyers look for this lamp? Will it be stocked in a store, sold by sales reps, or advertised exclusively online? The next P is price. Will people think that the lamp is good value? Is our target customer price sensitive? How will the cost of our lamp compare with others on the market? The last P is promotion. This is where you'll define when, where, and how you get your message out to your customers. So, what's the best way to market your innovative sun lamp? One question you need to ask is about timing. For our product, the best time to market it would probably be in the fall or winter when everyone is craving light and sunshine. Overall, the four P's is a useful starting point for building a marketing campaign. The tool helps you define what you want to say to your customers and how you want to say it. You can find out more about the four P's and the questions to ask for each of them in the article that accompanies this video. Thank you. I'm sure we understand a little bit more about the focus of marketing and how much each and every aspect of the four P's is very important in our business can, and can have a very good impact on our business operations. Moving forward, the changing nature of marketing. As we have learned in the introduction, marketing is a dynamic process that changes with the changing business environment and the concept of marketing changes with the time. Well, marketing tactics have also evolved over time in response to the changing business environment. The video to follow will give us more understanding when it comes to the changing um, nature of marketing. Please, um, let us watch the following video. There's a survey last year by the Finesse Group that showed that 80% of CEOs don't trust marketers. They don't think that their, their work's based on facts, they think they're living in a social media bubble, and they don't trust the, the output of their results, or that they're scientific enough in what they're doing. And of course the reality probably couldn't be further from the truth. The last 10 years we've had a massive revolution in marketing. We've, we've, digital has really taken over a huge amount of what we do. At Adobe, 74% of our marketing budget is spent digitally. And so we've seen an opportunity to really put metrics behind the creativity in marketing. Now, we wanted to use that opportunity to really change the perception of marketers out there. Um, there's some of these myths that we all hear, right? So you hear that half of your advertising is wasted, you just don't know which half. Or more recently, you see social media marketing becoming big, but people questioning 
whether you're able to measure the results of, of social media. And we really wanted to challenge those assumptions and ch challenge those myths of marketing, if you like. So we fundamentally believe that, that you shouldn't be wasting half your advertising. You can track and measure the final results of everything that you spend in advertising. That in social media, you can absolutely see the impact that social has when you're investing in it on your business, on the end results of your business. And so we, we run a campaign at the moment that dispels those myths, that talks to some of these and articulates why they are myths and how marketers can take advantage of this fact to portray the work that they're doing in a true light. The era of having a single marketing message that lasted for days or weeks or months, maybe a, a, a television ad in the 60s would have lasted for months because it was all about consistency over a long period of time. We're now consuming content in a very different way. We've got a much shorter attention span. So in the, in the US election last year, it was estimated that the average attention span was about five seconds. In 1960, that was 42 seconds. So we're, we're going to get through a lot more content and that the implication for marketers is I've got to appeal to you much more quickly. I've got to be relevant to you much more immediately. I've got to engage with you and give you something that's going to be interesting to you. And that means we've got to generate a lot more content because the half-life of content has become a lot shorter. So you might see in, in social networks, advertising may last less than a day before it, the, the performance of that advertising tails off and becomes ineffective. So we've really got to get into generating you know, greater quantities of, of content, still high quality, but making it more relevant and targeted. Marketers are used to using demographic data about people, where they live, you know, the, the household they live in, um, what they might earn. But, um, but that's a really a single profile of somebody, really a sing, like a single dimension. If you can layer over that another dimension of, of what they're doing and what their behavior is at a point in time, and if you can then take an individual when they come to you, so when someone comes on your website or into your digital publication or into your, your app, downloads your app and starts using it, if you can compare them to the last million people that did that and say, okay, based on what I saw people engaging, how they were engaging with me and what was most successful for, for them and for my business, how does this person compare to that, the, the history of people that have done that behavior and what's the most appropriate content I can provide them or offer that I can make them to, to convert? And we've now got the power to do that, right? And so a number of technologies have come together at this time to, to con converge and provide the power to be able to target and personalize content in a way we've never been able to do before in a much more meaningful way. You don't get into marketing because you're a data scientist. So the question on everyone's lips is, is, is big data relevant to me? And I think a lot of people might think marketers hate big data. They're not into doing that. The reality is I think we're seeing a lot of our customers really embrace it and really get a lot of value out of it. Because big data, one of the drivers of big data is just the sheer volume of information that consumers are generating because they're interacting with businesses so much more, again, on mobile, on social, across every channel. And the opportunity is, can I, can I collect some of that data and give it to marketers in a, in a simple enough way, in a meaningful enough way, that they can then interpret trends out of it and treat customers differently, maybe in, individually, based on what they see in that, in that data. That's absolutely possible today. Thank you. Two things. From this video, think of your business. How much do you spend on market? Or firstly, how do you market? Are you currently uh, performing any marketing methods uh, for your business? If so, during your budgeting, how much do you spend on marketing? Secondly, the target market and how to personalize our, our marketing methods to meet our target market. This is very important in order to ensure that our marketing strategies meet our targeted, um, uh, targeted market. Well, let us look into the marketing fundamentals and other marketing tools which are very important when it comes to um, the marketing 
of our products. We're gonna watch a video that's gonna give us a little bit more information with regards to steps which are successful and very really useful for our businesses when it comes to um, marketing of our products. Please let us uh, watch the following video. Thank you. I hope the 11 key points highlighted in this video really helps us understand the importance of marketing and using other marketing methods as well for marketing. Think of having a big business logo for your business. How important is that? It sets you apart, it sets you different from everyone around you. How about the, the, the tagline? If you look behind me, my tagline is partners in SME development. This sets us apart 
from any other business development associates out there because we take into SME we take SME development at a very, very different angle. Have a tagline for your business. Differentiate yourself from any other farmer out there. Have a business website. This will detail everything that you do and it will be easy for you to market your products. I hope those key points really helped us. Hence, you are going to think about the marketing method that you are currently using. Have you identified your market? These are some of the things that we should think about in order to reach our market. Now, understanding your market and competition. Growing your business without understanding your competitors is very risky. We should have a market research. This will prepare us for changing our marketing methods if need be and prevent your business being left behind by the competition. Market research involves, uh, involves uh, collecting and analyzing information about your market, including your customers and your competitors. Now, in agriculture, how can we market our produce? Well, the video to follow is going to assist us with regards to um, how can we market um, our produce. Please um, let us watch, then we discuss it afterwards. ...of agricultural marketing. Introduction to agricultural marketing. In most of your homes, the food you eat is obviously cooked by your mother. We know that raw materials required to cook these dishes are cultivated by farmers somewhere around the world. Do you know how the ingredients required to prepare the food reach your house from the farmland where they are cultivated? It all happens systematically due to the process known as agricultural marketing. The process involves traders, wholesalers, retailers, etc. In this topic, we shall learn about agricultural marketing in detail. Agricultural marketing. As the name implies, the term agricultural marketing defines two fields, agriculture and marketing. Agriculture refers to the process of producing goods by raising crops and livestock, whereas marketing is an activity used to sell those goods. Thus, the combined term agricultural marketing plays a major role in moving the agricultural products from a farm to the consumer. According to the National Commission on Agriculture, agricultural marketing is defined as a process from which the farmer starts with a decision to produce a saleable farm commodity and it involves all the aspects of market structure or system, both functional and institutional, based on technical and economic considerations and includes pre-harvest and post-harvest operations such as assembling, grading, storage, transportation and distribution. In general, agricultural marketing is composed of two processes, namely input marketing and product marketing. Input marketing deals with the marketing of farm inputs to the farmers like fertilizers, pesticides, farm machinery, diesel, electricity, etc. Whereas product marketing deals with the marketing of agricultural outcome products and the movement flow from farmers, primary traders, wholesalers, importers, exporters and retailers. Thus, agricultural marketing can be generally defined as the combination of all activities, right from the supply of farm inputs to the farmers, to the movement of agricultural products from farm to the consumer. Let us discuss the new role of agricultural marketing. While comparing with the traditional practices of agricultural marketing, over the last six decades, agricultural marketing faced a tremendous growth due to several factors. Some of them are increase in the supply of agricultural commodities, increase in urbanization, 
increase in income levels, increasing exports to overseas markets and changes in the degree of government intervention in agricultural markets. Thus, the new role of agricultural marketing starts right from the time of decision making about what to produce, which variety to produce and how to prepare the product for marketing. Now, let us deal with the importance of agricultural marketing for optimization of resource use and output management, increase in farm income, widening of markets, growth of agro-based industries, price signals, adoption and spread of new technology, employment creation, addition to national income, better living and creation of the utility. Let us discuss them one by one. Optimization of resource use and output management. An efficient agricultural marketing system leads to optimal usage of resources, thereby increasing the marketable surplus. Also, it effectively employs various modern inputs to the field, which achieves a sustainable growth rate in the agricultural sector. Increase in farm income. An efficient marketing system controls the number of middlemen in the marketing process and ensures maximum income for farmers. This approaches the farmers to directly deal with a concerned retailer. Widening of markets. An efficient and well noted marketing system definitely widens their products, market across the country and even outside the country. This will indirectly help to increase the demand of their product and provide higher income to farmers. Growth of agro-based industries. A well-efficient marketing system helps in developing the number of agro-based industries and encourages the development process of the economy. Various agro-based industries like cotton, jute and sugar depend directly on agriculture for the supply of raw materials. Price Signals A good marketing system helps the farmers to plan their agricultural production in accordance with the economy needs. This is done by transmitting price signals. Next, let us move on to adoption and spread of new technology. An efficient marketing system helps the farmers to adopt upgrading technologies for their agricultural processes. Employment creation. Since this marketing system requires several processes like packaging, transportation, distribution, it provides various employment opportunities like commission agent, regulating staff, retailers, etc. Addition to national income. By doing suitable marketing for the products, the value and saleability of the product increase, which increases the gross national product, that is GNP. Better living. This marketing activity not only increases the economy of the farmer and his family, but also helps the poor people who want to consume their food products at low cost thus making their lives better. Creation of utility As we know, the marketing system adds value to the product. But in addition to this, marketing system also adds four types of utilities to the product. They are Form Utility By changing the forms of agricultural products, it becomes more useful than its original form. Place Utility since the marketing system has the main function as transportation, products shift from one place to another and create a place utility for products. Time utility. Another marketing function, storage adds time utility to the product and keeps availing the products whenever a need arises. Possession utility. Since the main motto of marketing is buying and selling, each and every product has a wide possession utility. Conclusion We can conclude this topic by saying that agricultural marketing not only encourages the economy of farmers, but also accelerates the pace of our country's economy. Summary In this lesson, you have learned about the definition of agricultural marketing, new role of agricultural marketing, importance of agricultural marketing, agricultural Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that video that discussed the importance of agricultural 
marketing. Please take time to go through it again so we understand all the aspects that were included in that, video, in that feature and see how we can apply some of them in our businesses. Let's discuss the marketing tools. In this session, we'll introduce the tools that the business can use to assess their competitors and be able to come up with strategies to gain and maintain a competitive, uh, competitive edge in the industry. First, the three Cs, the SWOT analysis, and the PACE framework. Well, firstly, three Cs focus on company, customer, and competitors. With the company, we determine our strength and our focus. With the customers, we connect, uh, we're connected with our customers, we want to understand who they are and what, uh, what do they like. With the competitors, we want to understand who is our competitor so that we determine a brand position so that we are also able to be ahead of our competition. Another tool is our sort analysis. Here we are focusing on internal and external factors that can make or break your success towards a um, marketing goal. The strength, what is going uh, and um, well and what gives us the advantage in the market uh, of our competitors? What do our current resources excel at? These are the strengths of our business. How about the weaknesses? What did not go well, perhaps during a certain farming season? Opportunities. What is going on outside of the organization that we can capitalize on in order to grow our business? And then the threats. What are the things going on outside that affect our organization negatively? These are some of the tools that we can think about, that we can use in order to develop a proper marketing strategy that can set us aside from other competitors. Now let us look into market research, segmentation, and uh, targeting. Here we want to understand different strategies and techniques uh, in getting to know our consumers. As always, please rate your knowledge regarding uh, how your understanding and your level of understanding on market research, uh, market segmentation, and market targeting. Market segmentation is the first process. It groups our customers with similar needs together and then determines the characteristics of those customers. The most common way to segment our customers is by looking at the demographics, the psychographics, the behavior, the benefits, the lifestyle, the interests of, and the personality of our consumers. This will allow us to easily segment them properly. Behavior is the loyalty, purchase occasion, and usage date of the, of the buyer. How often do, our, do a certain customer come to us? That also allows us to segment them properly. Market, ta uh, market targeting. The second step is, is targeting. The company selects the segment of customers they will focus on. After we've segmented our customers, according to their interests, perhaps their age, their likes, their income brackets. Now we target them. How can I target the, same, the certain age? How can I target the, 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 uh, the certain customers on a certain income bracket? These are the factors that we look at when targeting. This will allow us to be in a position to reach our customers effectively. Now positioning. This is the last step. We appeal to the selected segment. We've segmented our customers. Now we appeal to them. We want to get to know them, interact with them, engage with them, and value their opinions. We have segmented them, we understand them, and we know how to reach them. Now we engage with them. This is when they get to know us. This is when they get to know our products. Now, we are positioning ourselves in a way that our customers can easily reach us because they know us and they understand um, what we want to offer them. Now, positioning ourselves um, and the value proposition. 
Now, on this segment, we want to see how positioning our operations through understanding our customers and creating a brand positioning statement that emphasizes the value proposition uh, which they are offering to our consumers. Also, test your knowledge and the level of your understanding with regards to competitive positioning, redefining the product through the value proposition. To get started, what is competitive positioning? This is about understanding who your customer is and providing the consumer with an understanding of your brand and your product. We are giving them giving our customers everything about us, who we are, as well as our products, with the goal to increase our sales and finding a niche in the market through our products. Now, there are some of the elements of, of positioning a strategy. The market for your product. Learn how to increase the success of your company. Think whether the market for your product is too big or too small. What stage is it at? Is it a growth stage or it's at an advanced stage? What does your audience want? What does your market want? What do your customers want? These are some of the things that we can think of when positioning ourselves, your company performance and the value of your product. Now, we are going to discuss about how to redefine the product through the value proposition. We're going to watch a video on redefining the product through the value proposition. Let us see how we can um, redefine our products through the value proposition. What, what is a product? Is a product? Because, because when you when think, you think at, least at least the way I think, I think about products, products, I think of the physical, physical good. good. When, when I go, I go out, out and buy a car, car or a toaster or, or, or a blender or a skateboard, or a skateboard even, you know, you know I, think I think the product, the product is that actual, actual physical, physical good. good. In parallel, In parallel when, when I buy a service, service product, product, right, a haircut or let's say going to the movie to watch a film, I think of just that specific experience. But is that all a product is? Is a product, you know, much more than just that tangible physical good or that moment in time? And this is something that Paul is going to dig into a little bit, a little later in the session today. But I wanted to tell you a story about a product, shoes, and the company that sells them. Because I believe that when you think about how they sell the product, the physical good, You'll start, You'll start to understand, to understand that, that, that maybe, maybe a product, product can be more than just, just that, that one, one item, item, that, that one, one element, element that we that always, we always think, about think about when we think of the word product. product. The, company the company that I, that I want to talk, talk about, I think some, some of you will know, know. This, this company is called Zappos. Zappos. And, it's and it's a very, you know, interesting, big company here in the United States. Now, of course, if you're following Zappos, you know that it really only operates just in the U.S. And part of that is because of where it came from. It started in 1999. And three individuals, and, and I'm going to talk about one of them, you know, founded the company at that point in time and named it ShoeSite.com. But they decided very quickly that that probably wasn't the best thing because they hoped that at some point in the history of the company they would be able to sell more than just shoes. And so they chose a new name after the first year called Zappos. And it was, to be honest, named after the Spanish word for shoes. They hoped that they could grow the company and they set big goals that within 10 years they would be at a billion dollars in revenue. Interestingly, they also wanted to set another goal that they would be a company that people wanted to work for that they would be recognized in America as one of the top 100 employers. And they started off on this journey quite successfully. They were doing $20 million in sales every month, right out of the gate almost. 
And over time, the CEO, one of the founders, a guy named Tony Shea, grew to become the face of the organization. Now, why this company is interesting and why it relates to this notion of product is what Tony Shea and the rest of the organization, the rest of the leadership team, gives to the customer when they buy the product. And what they give is customer service. Because Tony made it the mandate that this company would be different than other companies. He actually wrote a book called Delivering Happiness to describe what he believed was the true value proposition, something we've talked about before, that a buying a product from this company would be. It's interesting because each of the employees of this organization are empowered to ensure that the entire experience of buying shoes on Zappos is going to be amazing. There's almost no constraints on what employees at Zappos can do for the customer. They're not given a set script when they take calls or, or take internet messages from potential customers. They can take hours even. The record is over 10 hours on one sales call alone, as long as the customer is happy. This has resulted, obviously, in amazing word of mouth. The company's grown without advertising, without promotion. But the product, the product which, encompasses which encompasses all of this, of this wonderful, wonderful customer, customer service, service has, made has made it a success. success. Tony, like... Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that video that discussed about the importance of focusing on our product and um, the value proposition of our product. This session has been uh, very helpful in helping us understand the four pieces of marketing. We saw the video discussing the importance of agricultural marketing and market segmentation and also understanding your segmented market. Our next session will discuss branding and pricing, distribution and communication, role of social media as well as the e-commerce. Thank you for tuning in. Now we're going to have our question and answer session. Till next time. Thank you.